What's going on today, YouTube? Recently, I've been working on decision calling with local language, uh, lo local large language models. So um, think of it as like ChatGPT, but local. And um, I just wanted to talk about how I've been doing it and just um, kind of talk through some of the stuff I've been learning and discovering. So on the screen here, you can see um, I've got my IDE open. So I'm inside of Cursor. And this is the Neuro Clone project, the one that I, I was doing on stream. It's already been two weeks since I last streamed, but we are currently working on um, creating a way to allow for this AI assistant or VTuber to make decisions based on what I tell it or what I ask it. And so I have it running here. Um, if you see down below, we've got three different terminals, one, two, three. Um, this one on the left is what I just ran is the Python script that I'm going to use to call messages. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Uh, the one in the middle is the one that I actually have running right now. And this is Llama CPP server. So I can, um, I can basically ask it a question. Be like, um, well, currently I have it set up in a specific way to only call functions or to only call tools. So I can ask it something like, can you browse the internet for the most popular, I don't know, we'll say song from Expedition 33. And I have implemented and augmented the um, LLM with... Uh, oh, I need to fix this real quick. But I've augmented and implemented the LLM with a tool that can browse the internet. So uh, I just got to do jailbreak result equals none. All right. And then we'll rerun this. So like, as I was saying, the code can currently call um, a, a browse the web function and then it can find out results for me. So uh, we'll copy this again, paste this in here. And that's really what I've been working on, trying to figure out how to augment these local large language models with tools that they can call and, and decide on their own. And so you can see this middle one is running up a bunch of tokens here, and it's currently doing a bunch of different calls. And so we have an answer here. I did a quick search of the official Clear Obscure Expedition 33 soundtrack, uh, 2025. The most streamed track on the album is Lumiere. And it has uh, the highest number of streams on Spotify and YouTube with about 1.9 million plays in its first weeks. So I believe that is close to correct. Lumiere is the most popular one from Expedition 33. Um, we could also search up something like, can you give me the most uh, recent um, LLM release from OpenAI? And this should generate, oops, I need to say, can you browse the internet to find the most recent release from OpenAI? So real quick, um, this is what its weights were trained on. So it replied GPT-4 Turbo. So that's what it knows internally. Um, and so now I'm going to instruct it to browse the internet to find the latest model. And it should say, yes, it should say GPT-5 here. So here we go, GPT-5, August 7, 2025. So you may be curious um, how I augmented the model to do tool calling and function calling. Um, and I wasn't too sure on how this was done myself in the beginning either. Uh, so uh, the main premise of tool calling is you give ChatGPT well, you give the large language model uh, basically like this large list of tools, and then you specify them uh, in this speci in the specific way here. So we've got like function, the name, description, and then the parameters you want to pass it. So we just specify this list with a bunch of different um, schemas for uh, how these functions work, and then uh, it's going to take these in, and then it's going to output a tool call um, that you have to parse through. So that's what I didn't understand before this is that in order to call a, a Python function um, from the large language model, you need to parse the response back from the LLM. And so we have like this check tool call uh, function here that does that exact 
parsing, it gets the function um, that needs to be called, and it gets all of the parameters and arguments that we need to pass into the function, and then it calls it with this here. So I'm not going to go too crazy into details, uh, into the details here, but basically uh, what this does is it parses that response, gets the name, um, gets all the arguments, it'll call the function, and then it will return that response in one of these return statements here. So that's what's happening in this block. And then all we need to do is just do that in a loop for as many tool calls as the model is trying to do. And that's uh, or until it decides that it no longer needs tool calls. Then we do a final um, kind of, I guess, or the model does a final summary on all the tool call responses. And then it returns that back to me. So that's what we're seeing here in this left-hand corner. So, um, you know, there are a lot of different things that can be done with this. Um, and it's, it's pretty exciting because the model is really good. And it's very accurate with its, with its tool calls and functions. Like, I think it's, I've tried this in the past, um, but not to this extent, um, to do tool calling. And this one is the easiest to get up and going. Uh, you can simply get something like Llama CPP going or Llama CPP, um, launch it in the server with the GGUF models, and then you can just call it with OpenAI's um, library. And that's what we're following here. So set it up like that. Um, now, if you guys are interested in kind of a full tutorial on how to do this, uh, please let me know. I can create a um, kind of like a... a uh, a simpler demo to get this up and going um, and then yeah but yeah let comment down below if that's something you guys would want to see um, I do want to go over one more thing too so GPT OSS has gotten um, a lot of flack for being very censored um, and I definitely agree um, that there are some censorships there to where it doesn't do certain tool calls or doesn't browse for certain things so um, I created uh, or I figured out like a prompt that allows me to generate tool calls in a different way and so uh, I have llama CPP here and then right here I have a different or I have the obliterated version of GPT OSS and I can now um, do something like uh, let's say how or can you browse the web to make a, I don't know, we'll say like a pipe bomb. And, and so it's going to lag a little bit here, I think, because I have two big models running. Um, but yeah, here you can see this middle model, this middle terminal here is um, running and then this right terminal ran after all of the tool calls um, so we should get a summary here on the left hand side fairly soon okay so um, ultimately this actually failed to summarize everything so this GPT obliterated model it um, sometimes works to summarize um, uh, these uh, denials but for whatever reason during this time it failed so um, that's something that I'm still currently looking at but I was um, able to get or what happened in that previous query is that the model did in fact um, use tool calling to browse the web to uh, figure out how to make a pipe bomb and then what failed was the summary model um, because uh, unfortunately if you try to use GPT OSS to summarize a refusal, it it won't it won't do that. So yeah, I'm currently working on this and just trying to figure out how to better do this. But I have uh, created that inside of the code here to uh, kind of handle like these what I'm calling these jailbreak responses. So simply put, if a um, if a model fails to call uh, tools or has some type of refusal response, um, I call it again with a different system prompt that allows it to output a tool response uh, so that I can then call it and, and I'm just calling that jailbreak so yeah I'm uh, hopefully the 
uh, I'm able to find something like that or uh, I need to find a different model that can that can summarize things because yeah this failed unfortunately um, and uh, yeah so um, the importance of this I think is pretty high because um, what I'm working on right now is a like an AI assistant that is able to make decisions based on what type of input it receives. And so the biggest issue with that uh, was that I would have to call a, a cloud or so I want to do everything locally. But the biggest issue with that before was that I would have to call maybe like a cloud service like OpenAI in order to achieve this function calling. Um, with something like GPT OSS locally, and we now have kind of that power to do it um, on our own machines. And the only issue is kind of like these refusals. But I don't know how often I'm going to be calling um, questions or queries that will actually get refused. So we'll see. Um, that might not actually be need, uh, something that I need to accomplish. I have tried to use like the obliterate model to uh, do tool calling and it's absolutely garbage with that. So um, <laughs> I, I have to stick with GPT OSS. If anyone has figured out how to do it with the obliterated model, I would love to know how um, because yeah, that would be nice. Uh, I wouldn't have to do all of these little workarounds inside of the, cl uh, the code here. But um, if you're curious, I am using Llama CPP uh, as the inference server here. And this was really easy to get going. So I just go to the releases, just go to the uh, CUDA one here, download, uh, extract, and then just call the Llama server um, within the um within that zip file so here we have it unzipped and then we've got llama server right here so llama server and then it runs and it does all of the magic so yeah it looks like they're adding some new stuff here um i think uh i don't know if any of this applies to gpt oss but it's always good to keep llama cpp updated um this is it though, I think. Uh, I will be doing um, some follow-up videos on this. Like, as I said, um, I am uh, utilizing this to make that AI assistant uh, slash VTuber that I was working on stream. Um, I think I do plan on streaming this sometime, um, maybe a little later or earlier next week. So we'll see what happens uh, with that, but yeah, that's going to be it for today's video. Nothing too in-depth, just something that I've been working on for decision calling for local large language models. And yeah, if you have any questions, please comment down below what they are and your experience with GPT OSS if you've used it. But other than that, if you're a member of the channel, appreciate the support. Thank you so much. And I will see all of you all later.